We've both found that it's frequently an issue when we're working with couples. And I think that's really what stimulated our interest mm. Uh, mm. as we started to understand that's what, you know, that we were dealing with Asperger's. We became more and more interested and we, we started going to um, conferences and joining specialist Asperger's groups and that type of thing to learn more because mm. we wanted to know more about it in order to help our clients. Yeah. Yes, um, and we both meet it individual with individual clients as well, but we find that mostly we meet it with our couple work because, I guess, of the problems in relationship that people will find they're having. Yeah, so you're both really experienced couples counsellors, see a lot of couples um, and have done for a long time, really. And Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 a long while. Yes. Yeah. And what 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 was interesting about this is the, the incidence of Asperger's in the population as a whole is about one percent, but we we reckon for any counsellor because it produces social communication problems, we reckon for any counsellor, even if the counsellor is seeing individuals, it's probably going to be about one, you know, one in 10, about 10% of your clients uh, as an individual um, counsellor. And if you're a couples counsellor, that figure can start to rise to 30, 40%. Mm. Um, very, very significant number. So whilst it's actually, a, you know, obviously 1% is still a significant chunk of the population, for us counsellors, and particularly those of us who are working with couples, that figure starts to rise dramatically. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So having some sort of <clears throat> ability to understand what's going on for not just the Asperger's person, but the partner of as well, mm. is enormously valuable. Mm. Yeah, so that's a significant number of a, you know, a counsellor's practice where they, they would be meeting someone with Asperger's syndrome or a client who's living with someone. With, yes, yes, exactly, John, that's the point, either mm. with or affected by. Yes, or even um, a child of, you know, yeah. a par who has a pa somebody who has a parent with Asperger's syndrome but hasn't known it, maybe the parent hasn't known it. You, you can meet it in all different ways. Um, and I was thinking as Alan was talking, you know, before I became aware of it and gained my knowledge of it, I know now that I've missed it before with clients. And, mm. you know, and it, that's sad, but, uh, you know, I know now that I missed it then. Mm. Yeah. So if you, as you look back over your practice, that's Kate, right. and think that's about right. clients you've worked with. and yeah. Yes. The particular ones where you think, now I understand more about what was going on there but it, it's too late now of course but uh, so it's been well worth it because it does inform what you do and how you make that psychological contact yes yeah i think the other interesting thing there is it, it's i think everybody says this it's much easier to spot in men than it is in women mm. Um, I would reckon to, I'd be really surprised actually with, with the experience I have these days, if I don't spot it, at least in terms of Asperger's traits, and we'll, we'll come on to maybe talking about the difference between a diagnosis and traits later, um, but I'd be really surprised if I don't pick that up in the first session if it's a man. Mm -hmm. And I'd be surprised if, well, it, it frequently takes me five or six sessions to spot it if it's a woman. So much harder to spot yes. the woman. Yeah. And I think there's a uh, people think of males when they think of people with Asperger's mm. syndrome. They think of a male with Asperger's mm. syndrome. You don't very often hear about people thinking of a female with Asperger's syndrome. Yeah. So there's a real gender um, yes. difference, I guess, and maybe how easy it is to spot or experience in someone. Yeah. I think females have learnt to cover it up more. Um, and learn to mimic other behaviours and don't present in quite the same way. Um, and there may be a feeling that there is emotion there and feelings you can grab hold of that perhaps you couldn't do with a male. Mm, yeah, so there's a really interesting mm. and important difference to think about. And I'm just thinking about something we were talking about just before we came on air. It was 
you were saying when you do trainings around working with Asperger's, um, clients who have Asperger's, you usually offer a bit of a health warning that a practitioner <laughs> might bump into a, the realisation that they, you know, they might know someone who might even be quite close to them mm-hmm. who has mm-hmm. traits or... So, so just to kind of let um, everybody know that, I guess, in terms of tonight, I mean, we'll, we're just on for an hour, but but someone might kind of have that experience of... Yes. Hmm. I think it can be quite a revelation sometimes to people who do come along to our training and workshops, um, particularly as we do live role plays and they can see somebody somebody they know in the person who's being role played. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a powerful experience just to see yeah. that and to, yeah. And we're, go, we're going to be doing some work together at the Babka conference in a few weeks and um, you're going to do some role play there. So that might also be worth doing the health warning at that point too. Yeah. Are we? I'm sure we will. Yeah, and I think, I, I think it is so much more vivid with mm. the role plays. So probably mm. as you say, John, the, the Babka conference may illustrate that particularly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested to ask you, what kind of things do you notice with clients? Would that be an okay place to start that that might give you a sense, ah, perhaps there's some traits here mm-hmm. or a diagnosis? or. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think the very first client I saw who turned out to have Asperger's syndrome, and I eventually discovered that too, um, I found myself being exhausted at the end of a session because I felt like a mobile phone searching for a signal and there was no signal you know I had a very depressed person in front of me but I I couldn't grasp hold of anything something seemed very different and I didn't understand it and it turned out to be that it was because there was Asperger's syndrome it wouldn't be that that person would be expressing lots of feelings and it, it was something quite different about the feel of it all mm. That's a very powerful metaphor of the, the mm. mobile phone searching and, and never quite getting there. And that searching yeah. for a signal. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And they're just. I think with, if it's couples, um, bear in mind, we've said it, mm. it appears to be four times as common in men as it is in women. So normally it's the man who's the Asperger's person and the the partner or the wife um who who's sort of long suffering she doesn't normally make sense of it so mm. she thinks of this man as, as unreasonable as controlling um rigid in his thinking um sometimes uh, you know very over disciplined with the children wouldn't be at all uncommon mm. um and and sometimes that over discipline will even get to the point of sort of pinning the children to the floor because they won't do as they're told and that type of thing. So it can be quite extreme sometimes. And I think it's interesting too, John, because often the reaction in this case, if we're talking about the female who's a neurotypical person in the relationship, um, they can actually feed the problem by their reaction to mm, it mm. Um, in that there'll be a lot of crying and shouting and, you know, the frustrations that, that grow with somebody who's perhaps living with somebody with Asperger's and nobody knows uh, the unreasonable behaviour and, and the mixed messages that come from that person. And I think those uh, extremes of emotion coming from the neurotypical person almost make the AS person worse mm, because mm. they really don't know how to handle that. They don't know how to respond to that. So they actually act even colder and more aloof. Mm. And it, it just gets worse and worse. Right. Because they may, they may actually become frightened by, by the, what to them is an over-display of emotions. Mm. Um, as Kate says, they... they pull back more, which of course then is the very thing that the partner's complaining about. Um, Another feature which is common with 